to be part of this um, service. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Joyce, my to welcome you to this uh, Sunday worship service. I want you to know that God has a miracle with your name on it. God is going to do some great things for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So get ready to receive the word of God. Get ready to be blessed. I want to welcome you to this um, first Sunday. Uh, first Sunday. This is the first Sunday of the month. This is the first Sunday of the month. And, you know, um, every, every month God gives us a prophetic word. And we have a prophetic word for this uh, month. This is our month of connecting with the power of God. Can I hear you say with me? Say connecting with the power of God. This month you're going to connect with the power of God. Uh, God has power. God has power for you and I, and God is a powerful God, and we're all going to connect with the power of God. So this month, in the name of Jesus, you're going to connect with the power of God. So let me say, I will connect with the power of God. So I want to, I want to, I want to speak to you. God has given me a message, a very powerful message, a noun word for you right where you are, and I want you to pay attention uh, to this message. I want to prepare your heart for what you're about to hear. Uh, one of the things I will encourage you to do today is first just open up your heart, uh, have an open heart to hear what the Spirit of God will be saying. Because I'm going to be saying some things to you from the heart of God, very powerful things, very amazing things that will bring joy and gladness to your heart and that will amaze you about your life and what God is doing for you and what God has for us. Amen? So, but what I want to encourage you to do is to have an open mind so that when, when the message is over, you'll be able to know what you got to do with the Word of God. You know, sometimes some people close their mind before they even hear what God is saying because sometimes it sounds too good to be true or too powerful to be a reality, uh, you know, uh, the greatest commodity on earth is the plan and purpose of God for our lives. That is the greatest commodity on earth. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible speaks about God. And the Bible also talks about God's plan for your life and God's plan for my life. So we need to get into the word of God. A whole lot of people don't have, uh, they have a second-hand information a whole lot of people have a second-hand information of the plan of God or the purpose of God for their lives. But today, you're going to get a first-hand information. Don't take people's opinion for it. Take God's word for it. So the Bible is the word of God, but also the Bible reveals God's plan for you and I. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible also reveals God's plan for you and I. So I want you to... Um, Get ready. I want to share something with you. I want to talk to you about the power of God. There is a mighty power. There is a mighty power, a dynamo power, a, a dynamo power, a power beyond measure, a power beyond comprehension that God has deposited inside us as believers. If you are a believer, if you are a child of God, if you are born again, if you are not born again, I will encourage you. This is one more reason why you need to be born again. But if you are born again, I want you to know, and God wants us to know, that there is a mighty power, a dynamo power that God has, you know, placed on the inside of us. The power is in you. The power of God is in me. But unfortunately, many of us are not aware of this power. And we have not been able to tap into it. We've not discovered this power. So we've not been able to tap into the power of God. We've not been able to connect with that power of God. But the power of God is in you and I. So look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 as I open you up to what the Spirit of God is saying today. Uh, this is very amazing. This is very powerful. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It will shock you. It will amaze you. But this is the reality of God for you and I. The Bible says, Now unto him 
that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Watch that. He's saying that God, God's ability, God is able, we all know that God is able, God has ability. God, the ability is power, ability to get things done. God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all, no matter what the situation, no matter the condition, no matter the circumstance, God has enough power, sufficient power, you know, uh, inexhaustible power to do exceeding, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think. But watch this now. Where is that power? Where is the power of God? Where is that ability of God that can do exceeding abundantly? Where is that power locked up? Or where is it hidden? Or where is that power placed? It said, above all anybody can ask or think. Where is the power? It said, that according to the power that what that worketh in us, that power is in you. God's mighty power, God's ability, God above all power, God's exceeding power, God's power, God's abundant power that is above all is in you. That power is in me. That power is in us. It's in there. That's the word of God. That dynamic power of God. That dynamo power of God. That ability of God. That exceeding. That power that can take us, that can, you know, do exceeding abundantly above all. That power is in you. So, you see, when somebody wants to hide, you know, I've watched movie, when people want to hide a treasure, they go to hide it in places, you know, that you can't even believe is there. They're going to go and hide it somewhere. When people have treasures or resources, they, they hide it, you know, in places, you know, unbelievable places. But watch this. God's power, God's ability, God's above all ability is in you. It's in me. So you are looking at yourself. You might not know who you are. And I want God, the Holy Spirit is going to show you something about yourself, you know, because sometimes we underrate ourselves, we undervalue ourselves, we underestimate what we are or what God has made us or who we are. You see, you don't know yourself like God knows you. You don't, I don't know myself like God knows me. We don't know ourselves like God knows us. So, but God says he has put his exceeding Above all power, it's abundant power. It has put it on the inside of you. You see, I, you, you, you're going to become, you know, amazed with yourself as you listen to this message. That's what I say. I want you to listen because God wants to open you up to something that will change your life. It will change your life completely. You're going to come to an awareness. You're going to come to a, an awareness, a realization of something that you've never known before. Let me give you an illustration that the Holy Spirit is bringing to me. You see, Moses, this is God's nature. And I believe that we're going to have that kind of uh, revelation, that kind of illumination today. Moses was a fugitive at one point in time. He was running away uh, from Pharaoh in Egypt. And he was in the wilderness, in the back of the wilderness. And he had a rod in his hand. And God came, that is God's nature. And God came to him and God said to him, Moses, Moses, God called his name, and Moses responded. And God said, what is in your hand? And Moses said, it's a rod. It's a rod. It's an ordinary rod. I just picked it on the road as I was coming. I picked this rod on my way. And God said, all right, you say it's a rod. Okay, let me show you something you don't know about that rod. Throw it on the ground. And Moses threw the rod on the ground, and the rod became a big serpent. 
and Moses jumped from it and became very scared. He's been carrying this rod about, but he didn't know what that, what that rod, what was inside that rod. That is the nature of God. Until God reveals to you some things about your life, about yourself, about your situation, you might never know what you contain, you know. And another time, God, God, you know, showed Moses severally this uh, reality. One time, God, Moses saw a rock, a mighty rock, and God said, "What is that?" He said, "It's a rock. It's a stone, mighty stone. Nothing can come out of it. It's just an, it's just a rock, mighty rock." God said, "No, it's a tank full of water. It's a, is 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 a container for water. It's a dam." God, Moses said, "What?" God said, "Speak to it." Tell it to open up, and that dam, that rock opened up, and it poured forth water. So what I'm saying is that you serve a God that is supernatural. God is saying to us, this is the word of God. This is not the word of man. You know, a whole lot of people, they, they, they feed on opinion of people. But the Bible is the word of God. That is the word of God. And God says, his exceeding abundant power is in you, is in me. In fact, look at it here. In 1 John chapter number 4, look at it, 1 John chapter 4. I want to, because today you're going to connect with the power of God, and that power of God will change your life. you got to open up to be able to connect. That's why I said have an open heart, get a revelation of what God is saying, then after you can make your decision. Right now, just hear, you know, what God is saying. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. Just open up your heart, hear let God reveal some things to you. Then afterwards, you can now make your decision on what you're going to do or with what God has shown to you. But right now, don't make a decision yet. Just open up your heart. Don't begin to say, oh man, I'm so ordinary, I'm nothing. No, no, don't do that. Just hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. In 1 John chapter number 4, 1 John chapter number 4, this is a revelation of what God has made us in Christ, who we are, you know, because we have been taking a second-hand opinion uh, of ourselves from people. We have asked people, we have allowed people and situations and conditions and circumstances to define us rather than allow God, our maker, our creator, to reveal us to us. And the only way we can know who God has made us and what God has made us is when we get into the word of God. There is no other opinion that's where, that, that we can really know what we are made of, who, who, who we are, and what we have, except we get into the Word of God. So, hear the Word of God in 1 John chapter 4. It says, you are of God, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, overcome them, who? Anything in the world, because what? Greater is he that is in you. That means the greatest power of God is in you. No matter what comes against you, no matter what you confront, no matter what challenges your life, God says you have overcome them. You, when you look at your situation from today, see your situation with the eyes of I have overcome this. I have in me, what it takes to overcome this circumstance, this situation, this condition. Why? Because greater is he, the great power of God, the greatest power, the ability of God, the power of God is in you. It is in me. That power is in you. You know, but we have not tapped into it, but it is in you. Know it that there is power to overcome infirmity, overcome sicknesses, overcome diseases, overcome failure, overcome whatever the enemy can do against you. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, you're going to have trials, you're going to have temptation. Situations and circumstances are going to come. None of us is exempted from the hardship and the difficulties of life. But the good news is that we have a power on the inside of us that equips us to overcome anything that can come against us. That power is in you. Somebody say the greater one. Say the greater power. That, that greater one is talking about the same thing. The greater power is on the inside of me. Can I hear you say the greater power? 
the greater power is on the inside of me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. That power that is in, on the inside of you can affect and influence every aspect of our lives. It can impact all our lives. But many of us are not aware of it, so we are not even tapping into it. We are not, you know, uh, uh, taking advantage of that power. But let me show us something here as the Holy Spirit is helping us. Look at Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. This is very amazing. This is mind-blowing. You can't believe it, you know, but I, I'm trusting God that you will believe it and it will intoxicate you. Look at something here. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, watch this. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, <laughs> the spirit of him, the spirit of him that raised Jesus dwell in you, he that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by that spirit, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So look, watch this now. He's saying there is a spirit, the power of God. The spirit of God is the power of God. The spirit of God is the power of Godhead. And he says it is that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus was crucified. Jesus lost his blood. He was crucified. He was, uh, he was crucified on the cross. He shed his blood, lost all the blood on the inside of him. He, 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 he was nailed to the cross. But a power, a power, a power of God, the spirit of God, the power of God, that dynamic power that is able to do, it raised Jesus from the dead. It was, Jesus came alive from the dead because the power of God raised him up. The spirit of God raised him up. But now the scripture is saying, if you look at your Bible, Romans 8, 11, if you cover the first two uh, words there that says, but if, cover those two and we read it again. It said, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you. <laughs> you can never be on the ground again. The spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you. So you don't even know what is in you. You don't know what is in you. You thought your little snack that you ate this morning or your food is what is in you. God is saying, no, 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 no. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That spirit is dwelling in you. God says that is where I, the spirit is. You see, if somebody commits a crime, for instance, and, you know, commits a crime and shoots somebody, they are always looking for the evidence. Say, where is the evidence? And people, if they can't find that evidence, then they can't find that they can't conclude on who committed the crime and what was used, the crime, whatever was used. I'm using that as an example. God is saying right now, they are saying, what raised Jesus from the dead? What is it that raised Jesus from the dead? God is showing us that it is his spirit, the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. And God is saying, after that spirit raised Jesus from the dead, I decided to put that spirit somewhere. Where did I put that spirit? I put that spirit in you. That spirit is in you. And what would that spirit do? It said it will quicken your mortal bodies. That is why, one of the reasons why you must learn how to refuse sickness. You must learn how to reject sickness. You must not allow sickness to dwell in your body because you know, the spirit of him that raised Jesus, that raised the dead, Jesus from the dead, is in you. You know, one time Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus. Watch this. When Lazarus was dead, so he went to the city where Lazarus was. And when Jesus got there, uh, the people started saying some things. And I want you to hear what they said. They said, could not this man who opened blind eyes 
have could he not have stopped this man that had sickness from dying? So they recognized that there was a power in this man that opened blind eyes, which could have stopped this Lazarus from dying. There was a power. Now, Jesus, that same power, raised Lazarus back for the dead. But they were saying, could not this power, so I'm saying, could not the power that raised Jesus from the dead stop sickness from staying on your body? Could not the power that raised Jesus from the dead that is dwelling in you, what is the essence of that power that is in you? What is the essence of that power that is in us? Could he not stop, could he not keep infirmity from affecting your body? Because the Bible says it will quicken your mortal body. The spirit of him is dwelling in you. I want you to get that. That spirit, that Holy Spirit of God is dwelling in you. All right? Look at, um, and it's not just an ordinary spirit. It's a mighty power. In John chapter number 14, John 14, John 14, glory to God. Watch this, John 14, the word of God says, Jesus said, look at it here. I'm trying to show you the spirit that is in you, that is in me, that is in us. It says, because we need to connect with it. We need to connect with it. You see, you, oh my God, Lord, help me. Help me. Let, me. let me go ahead. It says, and I will pray the Father, John 14 verse 16. I will pray the Father, he will give you another comforter, another helper, one of the same kind, somebody like Jesus, that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. That spirit is given to abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world, the world, the unbelievers, those who don't know Jesus Christ, cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither do they know him. He said, but you know him. For what? He dwelleth with you and shall be where? In you. So that spirit, I want you to know that that spirit, that part of God, that spirit of God is in you. It's the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. That part of God is in you, is in me. And look at it now. It says, I will not leave you comfortless. That word comfortless is helpless. I will not leave you without a help. I will not leave you uh, uh, without, without uh, the strength. So that spirit is where? It's in you. And it's not just an ordinary spirit. It's the power of God, the, 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 the ability of God to do exceeding abundantly, far above all we ask or think, I say, listen, just hear what God is saying right now. Don't begin to question, don't debate, just hold on, just hear. First, get receive it in your spirit that look, there is a spirit of God on the inside of you. You know, many of us don't wait to say, oh, you begin to ask questions. Don't ask your questions right now. Don't begin to ask questions. I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask questions in your spirit. But right now, just first receive it because you see, we don't wait to get the whole gist, the complete picture, to have an understanding, to get a revelation of what God is saying. Glory be to God. We, 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 we jump more, and I can see some of you already jumping in your mind, and I don't want you to jump. I want you to. I want to show you something right now. Just let's follow the word of God because God is saying something to us. Can I hear your amen? If you if you know that God is saying something, amen. Look at Ephesians chapter number one, verse nineteen. I want to. Show, God is showing us something here. Ephesians chapter one. Okay. Or oh, let's read from verse seventeen. Ephesians one seventeen. I want you to see this. It says. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, watch this. That the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. He's praying that your eyes of understanding will become enlightened. You can see clearly that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness 
of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So I want you to see he's saying that there is an exceeding greatness of power that is flowing, that has been given to you, that has been deposited in you. When you accepted Jesus Christ, there is an exceeding greatness of power to us world who believe. If you believe, if you once you become a believer, the power of God has been deposited on the inside of you. According to the working of what? His mighty power. It's a mighty power. It's a dynamic power. Which he wrought in Christ. That is the same power. Which raised him from the dead. That same power is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> that power that raised Jesus. The mighty power. I don't think there's another mighty power anywhere that, that can raise the dead. He didn't just raise any dead. He raised Jesus from the dead. That same power, that same spirit is inside you, is inside me. You know, uh, Micah, Micah, a prophet in, uh, in the Old Testament, Micah, he got a revelation of this. He has, it has not even become reality. It just flashed his mind at one point in time. In Micah chapter 3 verse uh, number 8, and Micah said, I am full of power by the Holy Spirit. Once the, I am full of power by the Spirit of God. You can say that. Say, I am full of power. You are full of power. Power. Dynamic power. Miracle power. Dynamo power. Wonder working power. You are full of power. I, it's, Micah said, I am full of power. You see, in case you don't know the Spirit we're talking about, the Spirit of God is the spirit that moved in the beginning of creation when God began to create the world. It's that same spirit. It's that same spirit. When God began to create the world, the Bible says the earth was without form and void in Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, that same Spirit of God that created the whole world, that same Spirit that moved upon the darkness, upon the face of the deep, that same Spirit is the Spirit in you and I. That same Spirit of God is the same Spirit, is the ability of God, is the power of God. That's the Spirit that created the whole world is in you, is in me. Is in us. Yeah. It's a spirit of power. At salvation, Jesus said, when you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So when the Spirit comes upon you, He doesn't come upon you for nothing. It comes upon you to infuse you with the mighty power of God. So the mighty power of God, the exceeding greatness of God's power, the mighty power of God, the exceeding greatness of God's power is on the inside of us. You see, for instance, now watch this. Most of us, we need to, we're learning, we're, go, we're learning something. I want you to learn. You see, don't, you see, most of us came into Christ and nobody has been able to tell us what we got in Christ. Nobody has been able to open us up to say, look, this is what you have in Christ. This is what God has put. And God is showing you right now. I'm, I, 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 I'm opening the Bible and I'm teaching because this is the word of God. This is not my word. This is God. And one of the things we know about God is that the word of God is true. He said that word is true. The devil can lie to you. People can lie to you. People can give you their opinion, but God cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. God is not a liar. So when, whatever God says is the reality. You need to accept it. You need to believe it. You need to take it because that is how your life will change so that it can change your world. God wants to, you know, unleash something to us right now. You know, I read the testimony of somebody and I'm believing that somebody here will be like this person. I read the testimony of somebody you know, a man of God, mighty man of God, uh, late Archbishop Idaosa. He said one day his pastor was preaching just as I was preaching like this. And the pastor said to him, Jesus gave us the power to heal the sick. 
to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers, and to, I mean, to raise the dead, to cleanse the leper and to raise the dead. Then he asked the pastor, he said, have you done it? The pastor said, no. He said, but Jesus said it. So I believe it can be done. That alone, that Jesus said it, steered this man and he went from place to place looking for the dead. That's what it means to accept the word of God in your heart. When you hear it and you say, this is what God said, just like Peter. That's why I love Peter. Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. He said, you are walking on the water. You, Jesus, are walking on the water. If it is you, just tell me to come. I'm going to do it. All you need to do is, Lord, you are saying there is power in me. This mighty power in me. <laughs> there should be a reaction in your spirit right now as I'm speaking to you. Some things must begin to react in your spirit. I'm going to show you something by the Spirit of God. But I'm saying this. And this was what Peter had in Acts chapter number 3. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John, after the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were going to the temple. They were going to the temple. And as they were going to the temple uh, to pray at the hour of prayer, they saw a man at the gate of beautiful. This man has been there, you know, for from birth. They carry him daily. And when Peter saw him, Peter said, Peter thought and said, did Jesus say, we shall receive power when the Holy Ghost came upon us. He said, yes. And the Holy Ghost just came upon us. So the power of God, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of us. So we must put it to work right now. So Peter said to the layman, silver and gold have I not. At that time, he hasn't gotten the silver. He finally got it. He finally had it. And you're going to have plenty of it. You're going to have plenty of silver. At that time, he began to use the power. So when you begin to use the power, it's going to cover every aspect of your life. The power of God is going to be enough and adequate for every aspect of your life. Your body, your mind, and I'm going to, we're going to see every aspect of our lives is covered by this power. So he said to him, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, Give ID in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What was he using? He was tapping into that power. It, that, that means that power, if the power can raise Jesus from the dead, it can also heal a cripple. He can also, if the power can raise Jesus from the dead, he can fix the cripple, uh, the limb, the limb, the ankle, and the bones, anything in the life of the person. He can revitalize it. That same power. It can quicken your body, it can revitalize the body. And he took the man and lifted him up. And he, leaping up, stood, verse 8, and began to walk and entered into the temple. But watch this. He began to walk. Then people saw him and they began to praise God. But there were some people who were angry with the power of God on display. You see, when you begin to walk in the power of God, people are going to be angry. Don't mind their anger. They're going to be offended. Don't mind them. Just make sure that you allow the power of God to flow. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, this is what I want you to see here. They, 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 they called them and they began to question them. Verse Acts chapter 4 verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, By what power, by what power, and by what name have you done this? What is the power? Look at the power in verse 8. Then Peter, what? Fear with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody say, Fear with the Holy Ghost. Fear with the Holy Ghost. Fear with the Holy Ghost. Said, You men and rulers of Israel. You see, so it was the feeling, that Holy Spirit. The power is the Spirit of God that is at work in Peter. That same power raised, I mean, healed the crippled man. That same power is what they used. Peter raised the dead. After that, Peter raised the dead. So many things began to happen when they began to tap and connect into that power. You see, a whole lot of us are hiding right now. We're talking. But we have the power in us that can change our world. We have the power in us that can change our world. But we have not tapped into the power. But you're going to begin to tap into that power in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you're going to begin to tap into that power in the name of Jesus Christ. So the power of God, he said it was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
You see, a whole lot of us, the only thing we heard about the Holy Spirit is that when you become filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to speak in tongues. That's just the starter. That's, the, that's important. That is necessary. But that also has its place and is doing something. I'm going to tell you what that is doing. But a whole lot of people, we don't go further. We don't tap into it. We don't receive that power. But God is showing us now that the power is on the inside of us. The power of God. The Holy Ghost. The invisible power of God. You know, that same power is on the inside of you. So Peter began to testify and he testified and he said, it is through the, through the, through the name of Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit, one of the ways you will always know the Holy Spirit is present. The Holy Spirit doesn't show himself. He always glorifies Jesus. He always glorifies. Jesus said in John 16, when the spirit of truth is come, he will not speak of himself. He shall glorify me. He shall glorify me. John 16, 13 to 14. So the Holy Spirit is always glorifying Jesus. So let me say this to us right now, that Peter began to say to them, there is no other name given on earth whereby men may be saved. But we see that the power working in, G in Peter was the power of the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. The power of God is on the inside of you. John 16, 13 to 14. That same spirit is on the inside of you. So look at it now. Let me, let me shift us into something here again as the Holy Spirit is leading us. Are you here? Oh, thank you, Father. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, God said, When you want to get things done, when you want to move mountain, Zerubbabel, he said, it is not by might, it is not by human strength, but by my spirit. So mountains can be moved by the spirit of God. Difficulties, circumstances, situations of life can change by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is the power of God. The Spirit of God is the power of God. So he said, it is not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit. So that Spirit of God is on the inside of you. The power of God is on the inside of you. That same power has been deposited on the inside of you. You know, the person, one person that got, another person that got the revelation of this truth was um, David. When, because in the Old Testament, watch this, whenever a person is anointed with oil, the Spirit of God comes upon that person. And that means the mighty power of God, the exceeding greatness, the exceeding great power of God, the greatness of God's power come upon that person. When Saul was killed, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel, when he was killed, when David was making a lamentation about him, and that's what, this is very, very powerful. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, David said something very powerful. He made a very powerful observation. He cried. He said, he said, look at it here. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, he says, how are the mighty fallen in verse 19? He said, ye mountain of Gibor, let there be no dew on you. Can you see somebody speaking to a mountain? Say, let no dew come upon you. Neither let the rain fall upon you. Nor neither, neither let the rain be upon you, nor the fields of offering. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. He's saying like, why did Saul fall as if he had no spirit of God in him? How can you carry a mighty power, such dynamic power, and fall like a fowl, like a chicken? He was saying, how can somebody that carry the dynamic power, the mighty power of God, fail woefully as if he had no power. It means, and that was one thing about Saul. Saul had the power of God, but he never tapped into it and he never used it. And many of us, unfortunately, that's how we are. We have this exceeding power. God has locked his mighty power in us. 
the power that raised Jesus, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of us. The question is, what is the Holy Spirit doing on the inside of you? What is the Holy Spirit doing inside of you? So if you, if you have a question, I think that's the question you need to first ask. Before you begin to ask all the doubting, disbelieving questions, ask yourself, because God has said that he has put his power, his mighty power in you, in me, in us. The question we need to ask is what the Holy Spirit, what is the Holy Spirit doing on the inside of me? What is this power doing? How is this power benefiting my life? How is this power of God affecting my life? What is this power doing for me? Am I even aware there is a power? Do I even know? Do I even tap into the power? Do I even connect with the power? Do I even relate with the power? What is the power doing? Look at what the Bible says. I want to begin to show us what the power can do. The Bible says in Job 32 verse 8, look at the scripture. I'm, I mean, I'm preaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching God's word. This is what the Holy Spirit fired in my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me hear your amen. Let me hear your amen. Let me see your thumbs up. Let me know you are receiving this word. Let me know you are getting something. I know you are all muted up, or let me unmute you for a minute. Can I hear your believing amen? Are you, are you receiving something? Is something coming inside of you? Yeah, you can show some like, you can show some expression. It's, learn to show expression when you are receiving the word of God. Learn to express how you are feeling it. I mean, how I'm feeling it is how I'm preaching it to you. So learn to I express yourself. Okay. Yeah, show some expression. Show that you, show that you, are, you, you love what God has put in you, what God is doing in you. Show, demonstrate, you know, always good. Yeah, I like that. Let me see that. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. All right, good. Yeah, because you see, the devil can't silence me from telling you what God is saying. And I'm not intimidated by quietness, but I want to show you what the Holy Spirit is saying. What we do with it is ours, but we need to, we need to receive it. Watch this now. Look at Job 32. I'll meet you again so we can continue. Uh, Job 32, Job 32, verse 8. The Bible says, watch this. I want to begin to show you what the power can do in us, what the power can do for us. It says, there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. There is a spirit in man. That spirit in you is supposed to inspire you. It's supposed to inspire us. That Holy Spirit, among the many things, the power is a power of inspiration. Is a power of inspiration. When the Spirit of God is on the inside of you, you will not be barren of ideas, divine ideas, strategies, concepts that can help you to conquer your world. Ideas will flow, divine a solution will flow in your spirit. Once you are inspired, you will not aspire. Once you are inspired, you're going to have uh, ideas, you're going to have strategies, concepts for every battle, every challenge, every situation of life. Once you have the Spirit of God, one of the things the Spirit of God does is to inspire you. It shows you, look at, it, look at what inspiration. Inspiration shows you what you can do with what you have right where you are. The power is alive. It can equip you and show you what you can do with what you have right where you are. You see, let me say this. I don't want to go into that, but I want, I want to say this. You see, for instance, there is no problem anywhere that doesn't have a solution. In fact, there is no money problem anywhere. Most people just have inspirational problem and the Holy Spirit is there to inspire you there is no weakness anywhere for anybody it's just lack of inspiration that keeps people you know discouraged and despair but the Spirit of God is there to inspire you if he can raise the dead the dead is somebody who, who, who has lost life but that power Quicken the dead, and the dead came back to life. Jesus was dead. That means lifeless, nothing. But that spirit brought him back to life. It equipped him with power. It, it stirred him up. 
there is a man, you know, uh, in, in Judges chapter 15, Samson. Look at, let me show us what the Spirit of God can do. Judges chapter 15, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Judges chapter 15. You see, your life will never be the same again. Because you are going to begin to you are going to begin to tap into the power. We're learning that there's a power on this side of us, which we might have ignored, but now we are knowing it. It says in Judges chapter number 15 from verse 12. Watch this. Judges 15 from verse 12. The Bible says they came to arrest Samson. So the Philistines came to arrest Samson. And when they came to arrest him, Samson asked his fellow brethren, he said, look, you just promised me that you will not harm me yourself. If you're going to deliver me to the enemy, that would be wonderful because you, I don't want to fight you. Just give me to the enemy. They say, okay, we're not going to touch you. We're going to give you, we're going to give you to the enemy. Then in verse 13, they bound him fast and deliver him into their hand. They, you know, they, they bound him with two new cords. They bound his hand, you know, with two new cords. Powerful, they tied his hand. Verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And what? The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. That same Spirit of God that is in you came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon him, his arms, became as flax. That was burnt with fire, and his bands loose off his hands. What are you telling me? Something they tied him. You can't be bound. You are too anointed to be bound. You are too anointed to be a captive. You can't be bound. You have what it takes to free yourself because the spirit of God is the spirit of liberty. Wherever the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Nothing can bind you. Nothing can keep you down. Nothing can hold you down. You have the Spirit of God. So free yourself. Be aware. Tap into the power. Then look at it. And he was there. After That's the Spirit of might. You see, the Spirit of God has many uh, compartments and implications. What was seen the first there was the might. The Spirit of God from Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 is the spirit of might but it's also the spirit of inspiration then look at it it was there the person that was born and he said what and he found a jawbone the only thing that was around him was a jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it hey kariyama santa laba shikabaya makuta laba sikabaya anything you take around you will turn to gold Anything you see around you that the Spirit of God inspire you with or inspire your mind around you will be adequate and more than enough to, and to handle the challenges that confront your life. Once there's inspiration, you can take something. When the Holy Spirit, allow the Spirit of God begin to receive, learn to receive inspiration, learn to be inspired by the Spirit. Then to be inspired by the Spirit. He took the jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and slew a thousand men therewith. Somebody will have said, oh, ah, I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by a thousand people. What can I do? I have a thousand dollars behind it. What can I do? What can I do? No, but he just saw what was around. What was around. And by, from this day in the name of Jesus, every time you look around you, you're going to find inspiration. Every time you look around your life, you're going to be inspired. There will be something to inspire you. There will be something to inspire you to handle the trial, the challenges, the difficulty, the circumstance of your life. And Samson said, with the jaw bone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, I have slain, what, a thousand men. Was it his power? No. It was the Spirit of God at work in his life. It was the Spirit of God at work. Every time you see the Spirit of God at work, people always do extraordinary things. People always do extra when they, When Jesus was in, in his earthly ministry, he went to a place, they had a wedding, and you know they say they, ha they have no more wine. They just, they just look around and they say, oh, it's all, pot, it's all water, pot, empty pot. They say, oh, yeah, the inspiration came. He said, fill the water pot. 
fill the water pot. You know, one of the reasons, maybe I could say this, I don't know uh, as the Spirit of God will permit me. One of the reasons many people don't get inspired is because the natural man, if you are a natural carnal person, you can't receive the things of the Spirit. Because the Bible says the natural man, 1 Corinthians 2, 11, cannot receive the things of the Spirit because they are foolishness to him. When the Spirit of God is inspiring you, showing you what the power of God will do, what the might of God will do, don't discount it. Don't be a spiritual person. I want to read that scripture. It says, the, the, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, because they are foolishness to him. They are foolishness to him. That's why he can he doesn't see the supernatural ability of God. He doesn't walk in power because he can't receive the things of the Spirit. For their foolishness to him, neither can he know them. Because it takes a spiritual mindset to connect with the things of the Spirit. But the good news is that I want us to read Romans chapter 8. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5. If you are born again, look at this. This is very instrumental. Oh, this is very powerful. Glory to God. Glory to God. As a child of God, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. He says... Look at it here. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He said to be carnally minded, to be naturally minded, to be a person that just think naturally, carnally, that doesn't tap into the power of God. He says, it's death. It's death. Death. That means deadness. Lack of vitality, lack of power, no life, no, no miracle, nothing. But to be spiritually minded is what is life and peace. Why is it there? Because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither can, neither indeed can be. So, you see, when a natural person, he doesn't, he doesn't respect the things of God. He doesn't put value to the things of God. That's why he doesn't have miracle. Nothing supernatural will happen to a natural person. Only natural things. Nothing extraordinary. Only natural things. So then you are not... So then, they that are of the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, 8. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be what? That the spirit of God, you see he's saying it again, dwell where? In you. You see that? The spirit of God. So you are not carnal. You are not a natural person. You are a spiritual person. The spirit of God dwells in you. The, say with me, say the spirit of God dwells in me. Can I hear you say one more time? Say the spirit of God dwells in me. What is it in you for? So that I can do mighty works. So that I can do mighty works. Jesus said the works that I do shall you do the works that I do, greater works than this shall you do. So the Spirit of God is to empower us to do greater works, greater works, greater works. And I see you doing greater works in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, so learn to move by the Spirit. So you need to ask yourself, I need to, that's the question I'm asking, what is the Spirit of God doing on the inside of me? Is the Spirit of God alive in you? What is the Spirit of God doing on the inside of you? That's why you need to ask yourself. You know, Paul, Paul in Acts 19, he went to Ephesians and he saw some believers. The question he asked them is very shocking. He said, because he wasn't seeing anything happening in them. So he asked them, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believe, have you received the Holy Ghost? That's the question the Holy Spirit is asking. Me. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Because there was nothing, no action. They were, they were, they were all, uh, they weren't walking in the supernatural. Nothing miraculous was happening. So he said, Are you, "Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe?" And they said, "Oh, we have never heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Maybe you have never heard today. You have never heard before that the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. It can inspire you. It can move you. Maybe you have never heard, but you are hearing right now. And as you are hearing, I want you to get excited in your spirit because your life is about to change. Your life is about to change forever." You have what it takes in you 
to overcome. You have the power of God on the inside of you. The Spirit of God is on the inside of you. You know, what we need to learn to do is to steer it up. Steer it up. I'm looking at the time now. Glory be to God. I know I said this thing for one hour, 40 minutes. And I'm looking at the time. And I don't know if it's going to kick us out or just leave us. I don't know. Um, does, does anybody have an experience of how tell me what it's going to do because i'm saying i don't know if i can change it right now i don't know mm. let me unmute you and see if i can get the feedback for a minute uh unmute all i'm asking you is there anybody that knows if this is going to cut us off or not for, I don't know. I think let's just make the maximum uh, um, maximum use of the time we have. Okay, so I'm so I'm gonna minutes, I'm so okay. I'm maximum. gonna we have six minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on Wednesday. I'll just stop so that I don't um um mute. Oh, I'm gonna continue on Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna continue on Wednesday. Uh, by the grace of God, at our Bible study, I'm gonna show you how you can. Uh, stir up the spirit of God on the inside of you. At least now, go, 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 go. Think on the fact that there is a mighty spirit on the inside of you. Go think on that. Go meditate. Go ponder on that, and ask yourself a question: What is the spirit of God doing on the inside of me? Go, go, uh, go, and um, come into terms with this reality first. Go meditate now. That look, hey. God said, this is not Bishop Olafe, this is the word of God. This is not me, this is God. This Every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. God inspired this word to inspire us. The Bible is talking about what God has made you and I. So go think on it. So on Wednesday, I'm going to continue from here. I'm going to share with us how we can steer the spirit of God, how we can steer the spirit of God in us, how we can begin to put that power of God to work, how you can tap into it. You don't want to miss Wednesday for anything. We're going to send you the link for Wednesday, so watch out for it. But before we go today, uh, let us take the Holy Communion. The Communion is the body and the blood of Jesus. I told us to, earlier on, we want to take the Holy Communion. Um, so if you have your Communion, bring it out. Bring out the body, bring out the blood. Bring out the body, the blood of Jesus, the Holy Communion. Uh, bring out your Holy Communion, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let's take the Holy Communion right now. Lift up the body of Jesus. Say, say, me, say, Father, I thank you for this that you have given unto me today right now. Lord, oh God, Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that everything that the body of Jesus contains and have be impacted into this. As I eat it now, let it become for me, oh God, the body of Jesus. Let the life, the power, the ability of Jesus, the strength of Jesus be released into my body, into my life in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. I give you praise, O oh God. Let my eyes be open to see the power you have put in me so that I can walk in power in Jesus' name. Amen. You may eat the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lift up the blood, the drink. I pray in the name of Jesus that it ceases to be ordinary. Right now, let the life and the virtue in the blood be be impacted into whatever you have right there in your hand. So now we receive it at the blood of Jesus Christ. As you drink it, you drink the blood of Jesus. You drink overcomer's grace, overcomer's strength, overcomer's ability into your life from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness is swallowed up. Every trace of infirmity in your blood system is swallowed up right now in the name of Jesus. You overcome sickness, you overcome diseases by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you glory. None of us will know sickness, no infirmity shall be able to dwell in your body. This is the cup of the blessing. You will walk in blessing. You will live in blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may drink the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, amen. I see God blessing you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said to us, we're going to continue this teaching on Wednesday, so I want you to be a part of it. Amen. 
If you are just joining us, I want to give you an opportunity. We're, go, we're running out of time. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to give your offering today, to pay your tithes. If you're giving, if you're watching, you can give your tithes um, online at hoffan.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org. That's www.hoffan.org. Go there. I click the give button. You're going to see uh, whether I want to use Cash App. You want to use... Um, you want to, if you are watching me on, on online on social media, you can look at the top and bottom of this. You will see a link for Cash App or PayPal. You can give your offering. If you are watching me in church, give your offering, pay your tithe, and watch God bless you in Jesus' name. I pray over all the offerings, all the tithe, and I speak abundance to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. If you are watching me online, you want to connect or you're part of this service, you want to be able to send some information to you so that I can be a part of whatever we're doing here. You, I want you to type often or text often to this number. Write this number down. 678-940-6080. That's 678-940-6080. Text the word often. That's H-O-F-F-A-N to that number. H-O-F-F, -F, F as in Frank, F-F-A-N to that number, 670-940-6080. Then we can always, you know, keep in touch with you. And thank you for being a part of this uh, service. God bless you all. Good to see you all. We, 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 we're glad to have every one of you. I think I see this. Uh, call. Yeah. All right. I'll do auto call on the social media. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. I see all of you. Um, in church, I don't know if it's going to cut us off, but good to see Miss O'Shea. Good to see Sister Sylvia. Good to see uh, Nevaeh. God bless you all. Uh, we're going to be on, so just be on. If it cuts off, then don't forget Wednesday, we're going to be back at our service time. And also, um, you also that are on the line, also give your offering and God bless you. I'm looking at it. It's not cutting us off yet. So, But you are watching me on social media. You've not given your heart to the Lord. You've been a part of our service today. And... Um, this is household of faith for all nations, but most importantly, I want you to receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, so that the power of God, this power of God, can come and dwell on the inside of you. Until you receive Jesus Christ, you, can, you don't have the power. You can receive Jesus Christ right where you are. You can be born again. That means you become a member of God's family, and then God will open up his resources to you. If that is your desire, I want you to say this prayer with me, and I want you to mean it in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus... Today, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for me and you rose again for my justification. So thank you, oh God, for so thank you, oh God, for coming into my heart. Thank you for saving me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. If you said that prayer with me, I have some materials I want to send to you. I want you to uh, type, I mean, text love to this number, 678-940-6080. Text love to this number, just the, the, the word love, L-O-V-E, to 678-940-6080. If you give your heart to the Lord, and I'll be able to you know, send some materials to you, that will be a blessing to you wherever you are, and God will bless you. Glory be to God. All right? Uh, thank you all. It's good to see every one of you in church. For those of you in church, it's good to see every one of you in church. Uh, let me see. Do we have any other announcements before we go? Amen. All right? Such a blessing. Good to see you, uh, Sister Joy. If you're still on, God bless you. Good to see you, uh, Brother Andy. God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for being a part of this broadcast. All right? Um, it's been a wonderful time. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. Don't miss Wednesday for anything. I'm going to send out the, the link to you. Continue to stay safe. No sickness shall be able to dwell, I mean, come upon your body in the name of... It doesn't, it doesn't matter what name they go by. The spirit of him that raised up Jesus is dwelling, is dwelling in you. And that spirit will quicken your mortal bodies. He will give you strength. He will preserve and protect you from every sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory be to God. I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. May the Lord God, whose I am, whom I may he bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May God lift up his good countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. For all of us in church, you can have fellowship. I don't know, let you, you know, fellowship with one another. For you watching me, until I come your way again next time, this is Bishop O. Olaofe. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our Sunday service. We love you. Bye now. Bye. 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 Bye.